When speaking of 90s hip hop, you'd usually think of boom bap beats, but before this period, the production sounded rather different and they were geared more towards the dance floor at a very high energy level. Today, I want to bring some of that vibe of that era into the present day with Machine. Herefore, I'll be using the new Icon bass instrument and team it up with some smacked up drum beats that I prepared before. Hand. The texture of these early 90s drums is something very unique and it required me to come up with a special approach this time. As a matter of fact, I created a whole separate machine project to mine some drum loops first that I'm gonna be using in the track later. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Early hip hop beats were often in a tempo range from 100 to 120 BPM, so a little bit more up tempo. And I realized that I had no expansion around that was exactly matching the style that I had in mind. Instead, I had to come up with some reverse engineering. I figured early hip hop beats were using beats from funk and jazz records. They found their way later into drum and bass music. So we had a drum and bass expansion called Rhythm Source, where we recreated all the classic breaks. They are the source for all the drum loops that I'll be working on. I loaded the 139 Hallelujah break into an audio plugin in my first group in Machine. First of all, I was tuning down the tempo to 110 BPM. And also listening to a couple of old records, I realized that the length of all drum loops has been fairly short. This was due to the limited amount of sampling time that was available back in the days. So let's simulate this by going into the pattern menu, holding down shift and shortening the loop down to two beats only. And you're gonna notice that you right away go into a little bit of a head nod feel here. In the second group of my machine project, I have another break called Hot Flash. Also, I did the same thing, brought it down to two beats only, so I have a very short section that I can experiment with. And in group number three, there is a very simple, straightforward pattern with a classic kick and snare sound that I got from the Prospect Haze expansion. These three groups are all routed into group D, which is my drum bus, and this is where all the magic happens. So before I start experimenting with the sections of the loops, let's unmute all the existing loops, and I'm gonna show you quickly the plugins in the drum bus. First of all, there's the Supercharger GT, which adds an amazing smack to the whole drum section and it really glues together all the drums coming from the three groups here. And it also saturates it and there's a little bit of EQing on top. I had some booming frequencies coming out as a result of using the Supercharger GT. So with an EQ, I managed to take down the 160 Hertz a little bit and I also cut the 2600 hertz a little bit to make it less harsh. In the end of the chain, there's the limiter. And if I activate this limiter, you hear even more smacking on my drums. Check this out. It's sizzling without anything in the red zone because the limiter prevents my master level from clipping. So all is in the green zone and I can start experimenting. But before I do this, setting up a record group is key. So here I've 
used the drum bus as a source. And on the first page, it's very important that you set up a couple of things here to fully enjoy the process now. You set the recording mode to loop the length to one bar because we will capture very short loops and the target mode is set to pattern. This means that with every new loop I'll be recording, a new pattern is created in machine and in the end I'll be able to switch between these pattern and between all these different versions of my drum. So this is really great if I go to the arrangement process later on. So let's target that recording group. It's waiting and I'm gonna record the first loop. Great, it's already repeating in here. I've muted the recording loop so it's not doubling up any sounds. And I'm going into the whole process now. In group A, let's mute the second break. In group A, I'm gonna be changing the position of the loop. find another pocket where the breaks start making sense and I'll bring back the second break in group B and I'll do the same thing, I'll move around the position, oh that's great, there's a little fill in now at the end of the turnaround, I like that so I'm gonna be recording this right away, hit start and Here it is, another loop. Let's take some more, go back into group B, find another section. Awesome. The drum pattern, maybe switch that up a little bit and bring in a couple of more individual drum hits here and there. Awesome. Record another loop, number three, and Here we go, let's stop the project for a second. And mute the source groups, unmute the recording group, and here you go, the magic has happened. We have all the drum loops baked into new audio files. Sounding pretty much the same like beforehand. And if I go into the pattern menu and hit any of these other patterns, play with all these different versions. And for my track I created seven different drum loops that I'll be using in the arrangement later. So I'm gonna save these loops with samples into a new group. All right, that's all we need. So let's move on to the next step. The new Icon bass instrument came in perfect for this track. It's an addition to our session bassist series and I just love the sound of it and I also love to use it with one of the complete control keyboards because they have the light guide, all the lights on top of the keys are telling me what they are actually doing. So let me show you a little bit around here. All the green keys are all single notes that you can play right away. <laughs> But I just noticed that the tone is still not quite there. So with the yellow keys here on the left hand side, I can change the tone to a more damped version like this here. All right, that sounds better. Let's try that one. There's also this here. Which is a flageolet uh, tone here, which is a little bit of a special technique to play a bass. It also brings up the tone by one octave, so it, right away it's a little higher. But you can go to page number three and bring the octave down again. And I think this is a very interesting way of using it because it will 
sound more like a double bass out of a sudden. Which I think is very interesting. And there is a slap mode as well. And you just saw me interacting with the three purple keys as well, which are tappings. So you can play any note and add a tap with that key over here. Or you can do stuff like this here. There's also the awesome possibility to have some loops played back for you. You do this by holding down any of the red keys over here and based on the tuning you define with the right hand in the green key section, a loop will start playing. <laughs> in the green zone, it brings me to another tune. And there are different loops that you can choose from. You can define the loops which are located here in these slots by moving over to the plugin and selecting different patterns here for these four pattern slots. So it's easily customizable and I'd say I'll record a basic pattern and we then change the sound a little bit more so it fits into the track. I'm really a sucker for these simple repetitive bass lines, but yeah, let's move over to Machine. Here is where I got some more plugins. As I mentioned, I want to fit in Icon Bass into the existing track and it's definitely more on the hot side. So let's add a little bit of saturation on top, which clips the high end and Now the icon bass becomes even more hot and sizzly. Let's check some more distortion. And it's almost too much distortion, but because the drums are so loud, I think it does a good job in making the bass cut through. And lastly, a little EQ to bring up the high frequency content even more. So you really hear the slapping of the bass while the drums are playing. There's also the option to open the plugin and select from any other sound presets. This means that the mixing and effect section of Icon Bass is gonna change and the bass is gonna have a slightly different toning. So let's select from, I don't know, here have a hollow. And also use these little arrows on top to switch through. Ooh, the face-to-face, -face, super boomy. Big and bold, also nice, but in the end, I prefer the edgy mids preset and I was doing exactly what I wanted. You know what would be good now is to add a little bit more of the articulations with the purple keys I showed you before. So let's have another round of recording. just added a little tap and slide 
into my bass pattern, which makes it sound even more natural, almost like coming from a record. Sometimes I'm a lazy guy and this is where I really love to use the search bar in the browser. So I went to the one-shot samples and typed in vocal, which brought up all the vocal chops in my whole library. And after establishing an open awareness and activating the pre-hear mode in the browser, I started ripping through all these voice samples. And whenever I found something that I really liked, I just put it on one of these pads. And this is how I came up with a little selection of vocal chops, like this here. Some more hits and scratches also, maybe I'm gonna use these later on. But in essence, these two will be just enough to seal the deal. By keeping the samples and pattern length really short, you'll achieve that typical vintage hip hop vibe. And another really important ingredient of 90s hip hop tracks are orchestral hits. And this is what we are gonna take a look at next. Orchestral hits are these little stabs that instantly charge every beat with a powerful, vintage vibe. All you need to do is opening up the keyboard mode and play with different tunes. It's an instant hit every time. So let's record a pattern on top of this track. By the way, this orchestral hit is called Hit Dirty Crates 4 and is coming from the Prospect Haze expansion, which is a smoky hip hop expansion that I love to use. One other element that you can hear in almost every hip hop track in the early 90s is scratches. And I was just typing in scratch into the search bar and this led me to a sample called Scratch 86 Uncapped, coming from the battery library. And I wasn't using the original loop. Instead, I was using a technique that I already explained in the how to make an uplifting house track tutorial. So you can check this out if you want. After I recorded that little loop, I ended up with a little snippet that sounded like this here. Which is simply a scratch loop repeating with some variations in between, and that was all I needed to insert into the track. Sweet. And maybe you noticed already these drum fills that appear from time to time at the end of every 16 bar. And this is something that I haven't been talking about yet. So let me show you quickly. In group A, I have all my drum loops lined up coming from the jam session that I did in the beginning. And I added two more loops here on top. The first one is called Drum Fill Bar Cave 2, coming from Burnt Hughes. And the second one is called Drum Fill Jazzy Drums 2, coming from the Aquarius Earth Expansion. And they both are nested in an audio plugin, which means they are repeating themselves over and over and over again. And additionally, I've set them to gate mode. So now, folks, it's time to get live and record some original samples, which is what I love to do. I noticed a lot of these 90s hip hop tracks featured very disruptive and harsh sound effect samples like screeching wheels and horns and police sirens. I don't have a police siren here, but I found this cute little red siren with a hand crank and this is what we are gonna make a sample from. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you want to learn more about the specifics of sampling into machine, I'd recommend to check out the How to Use Everything in Machine Part 3 tutorial, where I talk about more details of how to set up your input channels and much more. So let's see what we can get out of this. And here it is. Here you can see the waveform of the siren sample and moving over to edit, I can change the start and end points right away and chop the sample so I can play it on one of my pads. Let's listen quickly. Sweet. I'm going to truncate that sound and normalize it as well so it maximizes the potential volume of that sample without clipping. And I think it may also be cool to reverse that sound uh, in order to have a nicer lead in and the attack is going to sound a little bit nicer maybe if we reverse it. Let's try it. Yep. A little riser sound and let's narrow down the sample and let's change the start point so it starts a little later. Great. Most probably I'm going to be using only the first half of the sample anyway and insert it into a kind of an intro or maybe even the chorus of that track. Awesome! One more idea that just jumps into my mind right now is that I want to try looping a little bit of the siren and I'm going to achieve this by setting the sample to ADSR and then going to the zone page of the sampler and here I can activate a loop. You also see this visually being indicated by the loop marker that shows up here in the right display. And then with these two markers, I can specify a loop range where it's going to start looping. And let's see if we can find an interesting way of doing this. Uh... Yeah, you can hear that little snippet that starts repeating. One more time. With the crossfade over here, I make it a little bit more smooth and fluid. And the point is that I didn't match it to the BPM of my song. Remember, we are in the 90s, there was no time stretch, there was no automatic clip syncing around. People would set up these loops by hand. So let's listen back to that beat with the siren on top, plus that little train wreck loop that I've set up. And here it's just driving away from the actual tempo. And this is exactly the type of creative chaos that I wanted to have in that track. We can use that siren in an intro or even maybe in the chorus of the song to add some energy whenever we need it. All right, we got our smack up drum loops. We have our amazing sounding bass loop coming from the new Icon bass instrument. We have some scratches, crew shouts, and even a real siren that we recorded as a sample into machine. That's all we need to wrap up our arrangement. And I'd recommend to use the arranger of machine based on the scenes that you created beforehand. If you want to get a detailed run-through of this process, check out the How to Make a Drill 
track tutorial. This is where you find all the information on how to apply scenes to the timeline and start working from there. Now, this tutorial took us back to another era and I love what we came up with. Feel free to leave your comments below and see you again soon.